In this video, I want to take a brief look at the methods I use to create an N-scale chain link fence. The technique is straightforward, and the materials are inexpensive. As we know, fences make for great neighbors. They keep the good guys out, and the bad guys in. Let's get started. So I hadn't originally planned to tackle this project, but in January, temperature and humidity changes caused havoc with my track work that I needed to fix, particularly in the portion of the layout known as the Bathurst Flyunder. I'd started ballasting the area and added retaining walls, and I knew I would need to add a lot of fencing. A while back, I purchased a package of Woodland Scenics chain link fence. The price was reasonable, but I didn't pay attention to how much fencing was actually in the package. Based on the quantities hidden inside the package, I knew I was going to need dozens of packages for the layout, so I was determined that I would create my own. I designed some basic fence panels in Illustrator, turned them into 3D objects, and printed them on my FDM printer using a 0.4mm nozzle. I visited the fabric store to hunt down an appropriate mesh fabric. I found Tool, an inexpensive mesh used in wedding dresses and dance costumes. The mesh is much larger than the prototype, but I thought it looked good. There was lots of trial and error trying to come up with a technique to attach the mesh to the fence posts, so the following method worked well for me. I taped a small section of mesh onto a piece of glass. This is an important step, as once the adhesive is dry, I need to be able to pull the fence away from a backing, and glass is the smoothest and flattest surface available. The next important step was to apply a very thin layer of glue to the fence posts. In order to do this, I laid down a coat of glue on another piece of glass and spread it using a brayer to create a thin film of adhesive. I placed the fencing onto the glue coated surface, being very careful not to move it around, as I want the adhesive on the back side only, not the sides. These fencing pieces were then placed on top of the mesh and held in place with some styrofoam and weight. Twenty-four hours later, I carefully removed the fencing and mesh, scraping and peeling it away from the glass backing. I gave each side of the mesh a coat of grey primer, letting each side dry thoroughly before I flipped it. I cut the fence sections apart from one another and carefully removed the excess mesh using scissors or my X-Acto knife. I then applied a light coat of primer from above to exaggerate the shadows, and then added a wash of India ink and rubbing alcohol to accent the tiny crevices and folds. Lastly, I applied some signs that I found on the internet and carefully glued them to the mesh using superglue. Now, as I didn't have a place on my layout to install the fencing, I decided to resurrect one of my old dioramas where I built an elevated rail line. I added the fence to get a sense of what things would look like. I am very happy with how this turned out. And now that I have figured out a process that works well for me, I know I can make a lot more fence fairly quickly. 
I'm confident you'll be seeing a lot more of this as the layout progresses. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you next time.